It's the worst feeling in the world when your best hero gets hard countered. You could be playing something like Genji, Far, Wrecking Ball, and time and time again, the enemy will switch off to try to counter you and shut you down over and over. That being said, in this video, we're going to be going over the top six characters that people swap off to hard counter and how you can still get value out of these characters into your hard counter or when you simply need to swap off. With all that being said, let's just jump right into it, shall we? Now, before we jump into it, let me really quickly break down the difference between soft countering and hard countering. Essentially, what hard countering is, is you take the essential strategies of that character and simply by playing a character that counters those strategies, that character is unable to do anything. Hard counters are extremely oppressive and they're very hard to play through. That being said, with a lot of the specific tips that I'll give you in this guide, you'll be able to play through hard counters and still get value dominating that matchup. What a lot of people get wrong is the difference between hard counters and soft counters, and many of the things that people think are hard counters are actually soft counters. Something like a soldier can soft counter a far because he can contest her, but he can't outright kill her if she's playing in high LOS. Because of his long fall off range and his inability to burst her down easily, unlike something like a widow who actually is a hard counter, soldier would be a soft counter. Going up against soft counters can change your most oppressive playstyle of simply being out in the open and raining down damage, but it will not change your overall effectiveness if you slightly alter that playstyle. If you want to have impact against the hard counter, you have to fundamentally change how you approach the matchup. A far can still combat a widow but she has to play in really particular ways that I'll break down later. Essentially in this guide, I'm going to break down the different ways that you can approach each matchup depending on just how much of a counter they are. Now with all that being said, let's actually jump into the first character who is countered time and time again. It's your favorite deadly assassin, Genji. Unfortunately for Genji, there are characters that have been released over and over again that either hard or soft counter Genji, and Genji altogether has become far less effective. Firstly, let's break down the biggest one that people think of when they think of a hard counter when it's actually completely incorrect. The biggest character to think about swapping to when trying to shut down a Genji is Winston. Winston is the hard counter, people say. Play Winston and shut down a Genji. In my opinion, as someone who's put hundreds of hours into Winston and thousands of hours into Genji, Genji is only soft countered by Winston, and a good Genji isn't afraid of Winston all that much. Let me explain. Well, yes, Winston can close the gap and chase Genji around, easily zapping him down and trying to execute him. The problem is, Winston doesn't have any CC or ability to easily peel for allies, and as long as Genji keeps his distance and never goes out of target unless he gets a kill, allowing him to get his dash and run away from the Winston, Winston can never easily pressure a Genji. And on top of that, because of Winston's headshot hitbox, it's really easy for Genji to burst down a half health Winston if he goes inside the Winston's bubble and lands multiple headshot right clicks into that Winston. I've turned the tables on Winston's over and over again, playing extremely passively, kiting away from the Winston, and looking for the opportunity to turn the tables on him. As Genji, when you're up against this matchup, you can't simply brawl on the front line. You need to go in with intent, and your play needs to be that much tighter. But efficient Genji play overall will not be that hindered if the enemy has a Winston. Now that I showed you an example of how you can fundamentally just change your play a little bit in order to actually have impact against supposed hard or soft counters, let me give an example of how you can play Farah even against a legitimate hard counter. So we talked about earlier how Soldier or McCree isn't really that much of a hard counter against the Farah. Sure, she can't play out in the open, but if she uses any sort of natural cover or she plays from far enough range, she has no drop off on her rockets while these characters have tons. Now, unlike that, Widowmaker can definitely punish Afara and even Afara Mercy because she can simply one-shot them from any place in the map instantly from completely safe ranges. The only way to play around a Widowmaker is you really need to use natural cover. You can hug walls, play extremely high, and try to get the jump on a Widowmaker. Dive bombing a Widowmaker is one of the best ways in order to actually shut her down, but the only way to do that is to use natural cover to bridge the gap. In this way, you use Farah's mobility as a way to actually dive the Widowmaker because once the Widowmaker's dead, the enemy team was usually relying on that Widowmaker in order to shut down the Farah. See, the fact of the matter is Grandmaster Farah players have gone up against Widowmaker's time and time again. And sure, while Widowmaker is an actual hard counter, that doesn't mean it completely eradicates all ways that the Farah can play around it. Just like the Genji example where it was a slight deviation in your playstyle, you need tighter play and you need to go into intent with Genji up against a Winston because he'll punish you if you're brawling on the front line. Farah has to specifically change up her whole play style. It's almost like this. Hard counters put Fara on a mini game, and the mini game is kill the other Widowmaker before you do anything else. Essentially, that Fara is almost useless unless you can pressure the other Widowmaker or someone on her team gets a pick on that Widowmaker. This doesn't mean you have to swap off Fara against the hard counter, but what you need to understand is that if you play in the same way, not using natural cover, not actively trying to seek out the Widowmaker and dive bomber, you're never 
going to be able to get the value because if you're ever in the open trying to put actual impact into the front line, the far can kill you from literally any direction, one shot you. So honestly, you really need to understand when the enemy is playing a hard counter and how that can fundamentally change your play up and how you can still have impact. Because sometimes you can use the fact that they're playing Widowmaker in the first place as their crutch because if you shut her down, you can usually roll the rest of the team. Hey, really quickly, if you like content just like this, we have even higher quality Overwatch content available right on GameLeap.com. We have tons of high quality videos. Do yourself a favor and come check it out. And if you want to know more, I'll break it down in the end of the video. But for now, I hope you enjoy. Now, let's move on to a different example, not a DPS example. Let's move on to the third thing on our list. This is actually Wrecking Ball. And I'm sure many of you have played Wrecking Ball. You might have done some strong work. You might have rolled through the enemy team, slammed them down, got a pick, did all these amazing things, and the enemy goes McCree. They go Brig. They go May or even Sombra. These counters are awful for Wrecking Ball. They feel awful, but don't fret. There are actually specific ways you could play around these, but let me break down them in tiers. So firstly, let's talk about the first stage of counters. Things like Brig, things like McCree. They have one targeted CC. These aren't that bad. What you need to understand with these characters is if they have a lot of burst damage at CC, all you need to do to change your playstyle is not slam into them. Ideally, if, as long as you're just not slamming into them, if you're just swinging through them, unless instead of slamming down, you're never going to be in a fixed position long enough. Even if they stun you, you can still roll on through and you're not going to get bursted down. Or if you're going to slam them, you want to slam them where you're going to get a really sizable adaptive shield. If you get 400, 500, 600, it doesn't matter if they stun you even once or twice, you usually can get out of there before you die. Now, it's different against something like a Sombra or May, and the problem with Sombra or May is May can permafreeze you. She can wall off your exits and permafreeze you over and over again, and Sombra can hack you. So, firstly, with May, what you really need to understand is after you go in, you really shouldn't be slamming down because that allows the May to actually stop you because you don't have momentum. And one of the best ways is if you're actually swinging through the May, even if she starts to freeze you as long as she doesn't wall you off you can still get out of her clutches before you actually get killed before you get bursted down because it will slow you down but it won't perma freeze you if you're going through them fast enough now you really need to think of an exit strategy when going through the may think about her positioning think about if you go in is she going to be able to wall off your exit so as long as you play around these things there's ways to go through the may and play around it i mean you've seen these streamers some of these ball streamers someone like hard blue he'll play wrecking ball into may time and time again because he understands exactly the time to freeze he knows when he can go in when not to slam and never to chase the enemy team into close corridors he doesn't want his exit to get cut off now against the sombra this is the only one where i would say you might need to swap off wrecking ball right you you maybe this is not a thing that you could possibly do because sombra against wrecking ball is honestly the hardest counter in the entire game harder than widowmaker countering Farah. harder than may brig and monkey all together countering genji sombra is insanely good at stopping wrecking ball and the thing that you need to do is you need to really keep track of where the Sombra is at all times. And something that you can actually do against the Sombra is if you're quick enough to turn off her hack. Because Wrecking Ball can actually shut down Sombra's hack with his hit scan weapon. That is one way that you can actually play around it. Ultimately, you're not going to be able to roll around the map, do all the things that you normally do. What you need to be doing a lot more of if you're intent on playing Wrecking Ball is not going into the enemy team until you understand the Sombra's positioning. The Sombra will usually try and make a proactive play. And when she translocates back to her team, then you can make a play. You have a split second, but it's all based on game sense. And honestly, this is an actual hard counter that you probably need to swap off in order to have actual impact because she's going to shut you down. Now, moving on to the fourth character that gets countered quite a bit is actually Widowmaker. I'm sure many of you have played Widowmaker and the enemy team will swap Tracer, Genji, Monkey, Hammond. So a lot of these are definitely counters for R Widowmaker. They definitely try to chase her down. They definitely want to close the distance and shut her down. Here's the thing about Widowmaker though. Widowmaker can still get value against a lot of these counters. For some reason in Overwatch, they decided to give a sniper, someone who has the ability to one shot anyone across the map, any squishy that is, they gave her mobility, and not just any mobility, some of the best mobility in the game. While a monkey, Genji, Tracer, they can all chase you, you can still put value into them, and you can make it really hard for them to chase you. Firstly, you want to set up on the high ground, so they come after you. These characters, I would actually consider maybe a mix of soft and hard counter, but closer to soft than hard counters, because they're not hard counters. The only character that I think is an actual hard counter to Widowmaker, but I'm going to get to that in a second. 
Genji, Tracer, Winston. What you want to do is put yourself in a position where you have multiple chances to pick them or do damage to them before they get to you, right? If you're playing on the high ground, you can actually wait for these angles that they're going to try to cross. A Tracer will have to route to the high ground. A Genji will have to wall climb. Let's say you're playing something on Nubani defense on the high ground. You can watch these angles so you get an opportunity to actually do damage to these characters, kill them for the squishies or do damage to the monkey before they actually engage onto you. Then, if you're playing on the high ground and they chase you up there, what you could do is something really crafty. You can actually drop and when you're chased, you can grapple back up. So this is something that is really strong against things like Winston, things like Tracer, particularly Tracer, because if a Tracer routes to the high ground and then you drop, she's gonna chase you down to the low ground and if you grapple back up, she can't get back up there. She could use her recall, sure. Could be risky to do that because then you actually have a chance to win that matchup or you could draw back to the low ground. There's a lot of different things that you can do. It makes her time to kill that much harder. So your positioning and really trying to utilize your grapple to the maximum effectiveness can make it so these matchups can can't really dive you that easily now wrecking ball is different in the way that as a widowmaker you're not going to be able to kill a wrecking ball honestly you should almost never be able to kill a wrecking ball and because of his low movement cooldown he can chase you pretty much anywhere the only way that you're going to win this matchup is if you simply want away this is something that i really want you to understand is as widowmaker the way to play against wrecking ball and how you change up your play style to actually find impact even against wrecking ball is you honestly just want to ignore him avoid him try to get peel from your allies or find impact even while he's wasting his time on you. This means trying to snipe the enemy team. This means trying to get a couple of picks while the Wrecking Ball is wasting you. Because if you manage to get a kill, right? You get a kill onto the enemy. And the Wrecking Ball is wasting like 30, 40, 50 seconds on you. That's essentially two kills in the team fight, right? If you maybe don't get a kill at all, then it's one and one. And then the Wrecking Ball is eventually going to go back to his team. So you really need to try to find value in other ways. But unlike something like Monkey, who you can headshot. Something like Genji or Tracer, who you can duel. You can actually headshot with those matchups wrecking ball is extremely hard and that's something that i could see if a wrecking ball is tunnel visioning you you need to really get peel or you need to swap up all together but against the other characters trying to get the most value out of your movement abilities could be the way that you actually turn that matchup now let's go on to our support number five let's go on to our support this is zenyatta and this is where i'm going to kind of break down a couple of things that are interesting about zenyatta the thing about zenyatta that's interesting is he was actually the most dominant in a meta filled with his apparent soft counters right zen was extremely powerful in dive right i don't know if many of you have played back then some of you might have but in dive zen was incredibly strong because he enabled dive and the enemy team had genjis tracers divas winstons all trying to actively dive the zen he was the dive target but the thing about zen is if he could position himself in an appropriate way to play around these soft counters and he could put in enough value into their engage that even if they dove him they would die as as a result let me give you this example he could actually dual tracers right if a tracer has to use three blinks in order to get to a zen a zen can actually win that matchup and that's something that with with grinding your mechanics you can actually turn some of these hard counters or soft counters into even lesser counters because a lot of these are skill-based matchups and if they're skill-based matchups can you really call it hard counter or soft counter if it's a skill-based matchup and uh, the sixth one on our list is tracer i'll get to tracer in a second because a lot of people think mccree is a tracer counter which is kind of funny because i think that tracer actually has the leg up in that matchup but i regress zenyatta is something that in my opinion he doesn't have something that's a hard counter the closest thing to a hard counter would probably be something like doomfist now the way Way that you could play against doomfist is you really want to understand his positioning try to get into the mind of doomfist if your positioning is in a way that it's hard for them to dive you without the doomfist engaging if you manage to get some shots on doomfist before his engage it's a lot harder for him to actually kill you without dying himself discording doomfist calling doomfist these are all things that zenyatta can do in order to try and play against doomfist now your play style definitely fundamentally changes but zen is a character that can still outplay a lot of his bad matchups that is why unlike the wrecking ball somber example which is a legitimate hard counter i don't think zenyatta has that level of hard counter and i know i talked about earlier there's a difference between soft and hard counters but honestly it's like a spectrum there's no such thing as an absolute hard counter because you can always play around it. Like an absolute hard counter is like rock, paper, scissors, right? Scissors beats paper. That's the hardest counter that you could think of in any game because it's an always win type thing. But there is no always win type things. 
Jay Jonak, you take Jay Jonak, someone who's extremely skilled, someone who is known as the best DPS Zen on the planet. You take him, you could put him against literally any character at a plat level, and he most likely would win the matchup. He would find a way to win with his positioning, with his game sense, with his mechanics. The important thing to understand is there's a spectrum, and while Zen does have a lot of these soft and hard counters, a lot of these can be overcome with better positioning, better game sense, and better mechanics. Doing a lot of the things I said to do against the Doomfist on Zen, it's all about situational awareness, understanding where the enemies are, and what they're trying to do. It's so much easier to one-clip a Zen as Tracer if I can route all the way to the Zen without him acknowledging my existence. If I peek the corner on the left side pretty far away from him, and I want to get close to him, and he immediately notices me, he immediately discords me, I have to make the transition all the way to him, and guess what? I'm going to have to use Blinks. I'm going to have to close that gap. And so, sure, while I am a counter to Zen, I mean, he could headshot me once with Discord and melee me and I'm dead. So that's something to really understand when it comes to hard counters and soft counters is that a lot of these characters, there are ways to fundamentally play around them, just like with the Genji example, just like with the Far example, and just like with the Widow example. Anyways, let's move on to the last character on our list. This is Tracer. Now, I want to break down a couple of misconceptions on Tracer because... Tracer is one of those characters that's kind of like Zen. She might have some soft counters, something like Hanzo, something like her abstractly, but that's not necessarily how it plays out. Honestly, in my opinion, because of Tracer's drop off, she can actually destroy McCree over and over again. That matchup is much closer to 50 50 than any sort of counter would have you imply. While Hanzo is much closer to a soft counter, that doesn't mean good movement and good play from a tracer can't overcome that. That's some of the problems with people calling things counters or not counters. Just because you have the capability to shut something down doesn't mean you're necessarily a hard or soft counter. They have counter play, but it all relies on mechanical skill. A Hanzo could go up against a tracer and miss every headshot and just get rolled over and over again. In my opinion, a hard counter is almost something that wants to shut you down just by existing, right? And there is only one character that shuts down a Tracer just by existing. There's only one character that is a hard, hard counter for Tracer. And I'm sure all of you know this, it's Brig. And Brig is a hard counter because of one reason and one reason only. Because of armor, because of her rally. Well, sure, she has the stun, and it's incredibly annoying for Tracer. So she has Inspire, that's incredibly annoying for Tracer. But her rally, her armor, is so problematic for a Tracer. When Brig rallies, Tracers can't do anything. They can't kill anything. The only way that they can get kills is with a Pulse Bomb. And everyone knows how hard it is to hit Pulse Bombs consistently on Tracer, unless you put in the hours, unless you practiced. So if you're intent on playing Tracer against Brig, you have to hit your Pulse Bombs. You have to be able to stick the Brig. You have to be able to stick a Squishy. That's the only way to find value against a Brig. Because honestly, the Brig is going to get that Rally. She's going to use it. She's going to shut you down. You're going to have no value on Tracer. Honestly, you might just want to swap off. Every single time I've ever played Tracer, I've had a Tracer one trick account. And I would be climbing. I was climbing through Masters. And every single time, every game, I would end the first fight. I would go in at the Zen. The Zen wouldn't be paying attention. I would shut him down. I would duel a DPS. I would do amazing. And then the enemy would swap Brig. And... And I couldn't go in because the brig would just tunnel vision me. And then when they got rally, I was completely useless. So, and the reason I'm explaining all this to you is because I really want you to understand the difference between soft and hard counters and the differentiating things in between each one. Some things can be overcome with skill, but like with this example, it doesn't matter your skill, right? It doesn't really matter how good you are at Tracer unless you can hit these insane pulse bombs. And even if you can, it still might not be enough to overcome that advantage that Bring brings to the table over and over and over every single fight. So that's an example of the enemy doesn't even have to outskill you. Unlike with the Zen versus something like Tracer, for example, unlike with the Widow versus Tracer, unlike with the Genji versus Winston, the Sombra versus Wrecking Ball, the Tracer versus Brig, these are the absolute hard counters. That means that you can't even be effective with your strategy. Now, I know that this guide was way more fluid, but I hope it helped you understand some of the differences between hard counters and soft counters and how you could still get value against some of the apparent hard counters in the community, the hard counters that people say are hard counters. You can still get value out of these characters as long as you understand how they fundamentally change your playstyle, what you need to fundamentally do differently now that they are shutting off an aspect of your play. The Far example against the Widowmaker, the Wrecking Ball example against the May. Understanding how you can one, change your playstyle in order to still have impact, or when you really need to swap off because the enemy is just playing such an oppressive strategy that it's really just stopping you from finding impact no matter how skillful you are. That is an example example of what you should probably swap off. Now, if you want to have more impact even against your hard counters and you want to stop swapping off quite as much, 
you want to play your man, you want to play your best character, then you need to really come check out GameLeap.com. We have the best guides handcrafted by Grandmaster players, and honestly, we have tons of guides about playing into your counters. Widowmaker vs. Dive, Genji vs. Winston. We have these guides in spades, and we can really help you play against your hard counters. Do yourself a favor, come check it out. You don't even have to take my word for it. GameLeap.com offers a 10-day money-back guarantee, so come check us out risk-free, and I hope to see you there. Anyways, that's all I have for you today in this video. I hope this guide has been somewhat helpful for you. If you have any questions, I can clarify anything in the comments down below. The difference between hard and soft counter is definitely up in the air, and it really depends on individual skill. The thing is, people in the community often throw things like hard and soft counters out arbitrarily without taking the subjective nature into it or the ability for an individual player in order to change their play style up in order to still have impact. And any ideas for videos that you want in the future, any concepts or anything like that, I know many of you have been asking for a positioning guide. So if you want to see a positioning guide, smash that like button and let me know in the comments down below. I would love to make it, but I really want to make sure that there's community interest so I can get started on that right away. Anyways, that's all I have for you today. I'm Coach Bills, and until next time...